Peace, peace. Have I not always been an advocate? Have I not always sought to protect you from harm? If you wish to protect us, then give us arms, muskets and horses that we might defend ourselves. War is not the answer. We remember, Stanwicks. We remember you moved the borders. Even today your men dig up the land, showing no regard for those who live upon it. Your words are honeyed but false. We are not here to negotiate, nor to sell. We are here to tell you and yours to leave these lands. So be it. I offered you an olive branch, and you knocked it from my hand. Perhaps you'll respond better to the sword. Are you threatening us? Yes. Oh no. What have you done? Ensured an end to your schemes. You sought to claim these lands for the Templars. Aye. But we might protect them. Do you think that good King George lies awake at night, hoping that no harm comes to his native subjects? Are that the people of the city care one whit about them? Oh, sure. The colonists are happy to trade when they need food or shelter or a bit of extra padding for their armies. But when the walls of the city constrict, when there's crops that need soil, when there's... when there's no more enemy to fight, we'll see how kind the people are then. The colonists have no quarrel with the Iroquois. Not yet. But they will. This is the way of the world. In time, they'll turn. I... I could have stopped it. I could have saved you all. You speak of salvation, but you were killing them. Aye, because they would not listen. And so, it seems, neither will you. Ayawas ne yate hagum sare, am dahya yun ne skana se zagum haje. Let's put aside this assassination target having the most generic name in all of video games and talk about what Ubisoft actually get right about him. This is the first of the Connor assassinations in AC3, I think, and after the game switches from Haytham to Connor, the democratic and aristocratic sounding Templar group Haytham drummed up become stupidly evil numbnuts who all got an honorary degree of bastardry from Satan University, which wasn't even a university, but I digress. William is the first on the list to get signed up for involuntary metal knife surgery, and his thing was that he was going to be the guy trying to undermine Connor's village's right to ownership and purchase their land without their say-so, with the intention of protecting the land from the British or the Revolutionary War or something else. He was quite successful at it, since earlier in his life he had been dealing with the Iroquois tribe to help out the British during the French and Indian War, so he has the expertise to do this. Connor doesn't see the bigger picture, and so sets out to participate in the Boston Tea Party that would cut off Johnson's smuggling business and drain the funds he needs to purchase the Indian land, and then he goes off to one of his negotiations with the Native Americans and kills William from the roof. This is one of the points where Ubisoft's typical problem comes into play, and the Templars' reasoning for their plan to make them out to be the actual good guys rings pretty hollow when they only have half the time they need to explain themselves, 
and half of that time is spent insulting the person who's killing them. William Johnson might have been in the right in trying to protect the Iroquois from the coming Revolutionary War, but we'll never know because he doesn't have the evidence to back his claim. But this is the nitpicking stuff that doesn't make the set piece literally perfect. It's still great, and standing with other assassinations from this franchise puts it on a pedestal while the others flail around in the mud. I'm still loving Assassin's Creed 3's cinematic design and can't wait for more.